What's up guys, it's Z here, welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck of the Day. Today we are updating Labyrinth with the release of Fortnite Hypernova. We did get a really good new card for the deck and now I feel like the deck can become a really good tier 2 strategy, potentially even tier 1 once we get a ban list and we can basically shave off a little bit of the brokenness that we have right now in the game. So yeah, this deck is basically the replacement of Eldritch. It's a deck that can do what Eldritch did but a lot more consistently and a lot more powerful. So we do have some really good cards for the deck and because it's a trap deck, you know that you can always play the most unfair part of any trap deck so you can basically stun your opponent and use that to your advantage. So before we begin with the video, if you enjoyed, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss upcoming content and now let's get to the deck bro. So starting off with the monsters, we have three copies of Lady of Labyrinth. Now this card is the main monster of the deck. Lady Labyrinth of the Silver Castle can be treated basically as your Ultrageist Multifaker. This is a card that you can summon itself when you activate any trap effect or any labyrinth effect and it's not something that you you have to summon the moment you activate the effect can be special summon at any time if you have activated a trap card or a labyrinth effect previously in the turn as long as you have a set card on the field she becomes untargetable and indestructible by card effects and also she has an effect that once per turn when you activate a trap card you can set a normal trap with a different name from your deck so this card makes sure that all of your normal traps replace themselves which is basically one of the biggest weaknesses of trap decks is that most of the times you're trading one for one with a trap and then you don't get any resources out of it but because of this card, basically, you don't lose any resources while disrupting your opponent. So yeah, this is the main boss of the deck. You want to draw her, you want to summon her from the deck with the trap cards that can basically add as E-Tail is for the deck. She's the most important piece, and without this card, you don't have enough damage to go for a game, and you basically lose out on resources the moment you start using your trap cards and your opponent because they're playing most likely decks like Astira and Ishizu Tier Elements. Normal disruptions, they can be decent, but the thing is that they have so many ways to recover, so your resources are going to dwindle while yours while theirs are going to basically keep the same so this card is a really good way to keep up we're playing one copy of lovely labyrinth of the silver castle this card used to be the boss of the deck but now i feel like it's mainly just an added benefit of the deck it's a card that you don't really want to see in your hand because unfortunately it does not have a way to special summon herself from the hand so it's a card that you can only summon through other means mainly due to the trap cards but she's a card that can again do some really good damage to your opponent when you disrupt them because this card makes sure that that your opponent cannot activate anything in response to your normal traps so basically your traps are never going to get negated while well, this card is on the field and also you can target normal trap in your grave and set it to your field and you cannot activate it unless you control a fiend monster but you're always going to control a fiend monster because all of the labyrinth monsters are fiends and also it has a third effect that if another monster leaves the field by your normal trap effect you can destroy one card in your opponent's hand or their field so this card you can always use it basically try to handle your opponent and if you don't want to do that you can always use it as spot removal so it's a great card, but the problem is, again, you cannot summon it by itself, unlike Lady Labyrinth, so I feel like more than a one-off would be way too bricky. We play two copies of Ariana, the Labyrinth Serva. Now, you might think that this card is a definite three-off, because it's kind of like a Stratos for the deck, but the reason you don't really want to play too many Labyrinth cards in your deck is because Labyrinth cards, while they're great, on their own, they don't really do anything. They're basically beaters that get extra effects the moment you start disrupting your opponent with the rest of your deck. So, if you draw a hand that has only labyrinth cards in it you basically can't do anything because yes you can get bodies on board but they don't disrupt your opponent on their own so you basically want to see at least one or two labyrinth cards and the rest of your hand needs to be trap cards to be able to disrupt your opponent because the more labyrinth cards you see the weaker your hand is going to be and the less disruptions you're going to have so playing two copies of this card feels perfectly fine because it's the normal summon of the deck if you see more than one you're not going to be able to use it so you only want to see one and it has another effect aside from adding labyrinth cards on summon that when you basically disrupt your opponent again you can draw a card and then you can either special summon a fiend from your hand or set one spell and trap card so she's another way to get your lovely labyrinth out of your hand in case you draw her so there are ways to get her on the field even if you draw her but still you really don't want to see her so yeah this card at two and lovely labyrinth at one i feel like they're perfect ratios and the last monster in the main deck is of course three copies of lord of the heavenly prison this is pretty standard i feel like in any trap deck at this point even though you do have some other effects that can protect your back row sometimes this card is so good not just because it protects your back row but because the moment you activate one get a free body on the board and you also get to set an extravagance for your next turn to basically get another draw two so because you know trap decks they always need as many cards as they can possibly get and this card fixes a lot of the issues for the spell cards we play three copies of pot of extravagance now you can replace this or the next card with prosperity if you have access to them and if you feel like but again i don't feel like it's super necessary the deck is already kind of expensive on its own to be honest so i feel 
feel like putting Prosperity is making the deck more expensive for no particular reason because the deck, and any trap deck in my opinion, at least the decks that are not the strongest decks in the game, they would much rather prefer the plus one from Pot of Extravagance than getting a specific card with Pot of Prosperity and basically going one for one because you always need as many cards as possible in order to be able to keep up and if you draw like a starter or if you already have a starter and you draw another one, it doesn't matter too much because you're never going to need only one starter in one game because if that's the case then basically your opponent was not able to do anything on their first turn so this is why an extra card can sometimes maybe be a starter you already have or a more uh, an extra disruption you already have but again you're going to need the plus one most of the times we're playing two copies of pot of duality now pot of duality is a card that of course can be replaced with pot of prosperity the problem is you cannot activate extravagance and prosperity in the exact same turn but you can activate extravagance and duality in the same turn so if you see both or if you draw duality off of extravagance of course you can activate it and get another search so this card can act pretty much as a pot of prosperity in the deck a budget version of it of course and of course you don't special summon anything on your turn because you basically want to set five that's what this deck does it's very similar to red lich in that regard you don't really care about special summoning anything maybe you can activate a lady labyrinth's effect during your turn when your opponent activates a trap or maybe if you summon your ariana but again it's not something you really want to do because she's not going to deal with a lot of threats your trap cards are the ones that are going to clear your opponent's board even going second so special summoning during your own turn it's not a big deal so duality is really good but of course you don't really want to play more than one because unlike extravagance it's not a plus one so drawing more than one is basically having a dead card in your hand but of course extravagance even though it's dead if you draw more than one the turn you draw it next turn you're definitely going to activate it again for another plus one so it adds up now the other two spells that we play is basically the field spell package of the deck we have one copy of labyrinth labyrinth this card is the field spell of the archetype it's a card that it's not super good but it's something that can be easily ex be accessible with a lot of cards like metaverse or searching it so if you activate a welcome labyrinth normal trap card it gains an additional effect that you can destroy a card on the field and if you activate a non-labyrinth normal trap card you can special summon a fiend monster from your hand or graveyard so it's another way to cheat out lovely labyrinth from your hand or your graveyard if you're going to a grind game but again it's a field spell that does not advance your game state the moment you activate it so you don't really want to play more than one if it added a labyrinth card on activate Activation, then yes it would have been absolutely amazing but unfortunately it doesn't so as a one-off it's decent enough and we're playing one copy of necro valley you pretty much saw this coming as long as this is tier is the best deck in the game in any deck that can activate a card like this without getting destroyed itself by its own effect then you definitely need play it it's a card that in decks like exo sisters and other stuff like that is a definite must of and we do play metaverse of course the metaverse is now at three this card is much more consistent so we can use it to lock out our opponents when they're playing graveyard based decks now let's move on to the juice of the deck which which is of course the trap cards. So let's start with a new card that we got in Foden Hypernova. We have three copies of Big Welcome Labyrinth. This card fixes a lot of the issues for the deck because not only does it add three more starters, which can basically get you a monster, it also has disruption effects. So this card on activation, you can special summon a Labyrinth monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard, and then you can return a monster you control, and then you have to return a monster you control to the hand. The thing is, with this card, the effect to return a monster, it doesn't matter too much because the moment you summon Lady Labyrinth with it and you get it back to your hand lady labyrinth can then summon herself again on the field because you have activated the trap card this turn so it's like you special summon one free from the deck also it has an effect that you can banish this card from the graveyard to target a feed monster you control or if you control a level eight or higher monster you can target one card your opponent controls this turn and then return it to the hand so this card not only is it a starter but it's also disruption which is why it's much better than the normal welcome labyrinth trap card that we had before so yeah this card is a definite three off it's a really really good addition to the deck we have two copies of welcome labyrinth now before the new support again Again, similar to Ariana, this was definitely a three of. but the thing is, now that we got three more starters, you don't really want to flood your hand with starters, because I mentioned again, this deck on its own does not do anything. You have to have normal traps or any type of traps to be able to disrupt your opponent to make sure that you get the extra effects of your cards when you do so. So making sure that you have the right amount of starters so you don't brick with them is really important. And this card, even though it's again an E-Tele that you can special summon a Labyrinth from the deck, it locks you into Fiend Moss from the extra deck, but you don't really care because you're not summoning much of the extra deck anyway and if a monster leaves the field by your normal trap effect it's a card that you can set it from the field from the graveyard to the field so it's a card that recycles itself so even though you play two copies you're going to be using this card potentially more than twice every single time because of its second effect so again it's a card that is really great in theory but you don't want to have too many labyrinth cards in your hand which is why i cut this card to two now for the rest of the trap cards we have cards that are disrupt your opponent the thing about this deck is that you have to make sure that you you have a lot of normal trap cards that disrupt your opponent because if you add too many counter traps or
or too many floodgates, you're missing out on a lot of your secondary effects that trigger only when you remove a monster on the field from a, with a normal trap effect. So we have three copies of Torrential Tribute. This is basically the best normal trap you can have in the game right now. It has been universally really, really good ever since it was at three, just because of how good it is going first and going second, being able to clear boards. Your own monsters getting destroyed, you don't really care too much because you have so few monsters that you're going to be able to recycle them and use them again later. So it's not like you lose too much when you torrential your own board, but your opponent will definitely lose a lot when you do so. We play three copies of Solemn Strike. Now, even though this is not a normal trap card and it's not going to trigger your labyrinth effects when you destroy a monster with it, it's a card that when you combine it with a card like Torrential Tribute or pretty much any other trap card that can clear a board when you're going second, it's so powerful that you kind of have to play. You can switch this around with cards like Solemn Judgment when you're going into game two and three, when you know you're going first, but in game one where there is a possibility for you to go second, you need to play a card like this in the main deck to make sure that you don't auto lose if you go second because you can use this card in combination with a card like Dokomatka Punishment or Ancel Tribute, maybe even Skill Drain to make sure that your opponent's board becomes useless. We play two copies of Dogmatica Punishment. This card would have been a definite three of if it was not a once per turn effect, but unfortunately it is, so it's not like you can use this more than once. If you could, it would have been really, really powerful. It's a really good two for one trap card, but again, being once per turn, you don't want to see more than one because you're going to have a dead card in your back row, so two feels like perfectly fine. And you play Trap Trick in the deck anyway, so you basically play two extra copies of all the normal traps in your deck. We have two copies of Compulsory Evacuation Device. This is another normal trap that can trigger a lot of your Labyrinth effects. It's not nearly as powerful as Torrential, but it's good enough to the point of being a good two-off that can trigger your extra effects while also disrupting your opponent. So I feel like a two Compulsory is really good. We play two copies of Metaverse. We do have two field spells we can play, and even though we don't have Mystic Mine anymore, which would have been a really good addition to the deck for maybe locking our opponent down until we get all the resources we need to go for a game or something like that, or stall out our opponent, Metaverse is still a really powerful card that you can use to either set Necro Valley, if you know you're playing into a matchup that can Necro Valley can destroy, like of course Shizu Tear, or if you know your Necro Valley is going to be useless against a certain matchup, you can always activate Labyrinth Labyrinth and get all the benefit effects when you activate your normal traps with a Welcome Labyrinth. We play two copies of Trap Trick, we do have two extra copies of all of the normal traps, and of course being able to activate Metaverse, I feel like it's the most important thing when you're going against a Shizu Tear, because when you play Metaverse, if you play three copies, if you see more than one, then it doesn't do anything, because you would have to activate an extra field spell on top of the first one, so it doesn't do much. But again, being able to play four of them with Trap Trick means that we have consistent access to Necro Valley, so we can stun down our opponent. And of course, this would not be a trap-heavy base deck without some floodgates. It's kind of like a necessary evil at this point. You have to play them. So we have three copies of Skill Drain. Now, if you're going into a format or a metagame that you know that a lot of people, maybe at your locals or maybe wherever you're playing, they do play a lot of Ishizu tier, you can of course replace this card with three copies of Soul Drain. The thing is, when Skill Drain is a card that doesn't really affect you, which in this deck it doesn't because you summon your Lady Labyrinth, you summon your Heavenly Prison, your Big Beaters, you don't really care if they get their effects or not, as long as you're disrupting your opponent way, way more with this card. I feel like it's a card that is much better universally in a Soul Drain the main deck. If, for example, you're playing a deck that gets killed by Skill Drain as well, but you can play under Soul Drain, then of course it's a much better main deck option, especially in this format. But for this deck, I feel like you hit a lot of our matchups by maining Skill Drain and siding Soul Drain than the other way around. So yeah, I prefer Skill Drain in the main deck in this deck just because of how good it is. And we also play two copies of Goes in a match. I feel like Rivalry can be decent in the deck as well, but the problem I have with Rivalry is that you cannot activate Lord of the Heavenly Prisons effect to summon itself under Rivalry because it's a rock monster and the rest of your monsters are fiends. But with Goes in a match, all of your monsters are dark attributes, so you don't really care at all under Goes in a match. And it's of course not as powerful as Skill Drains, so this is why I play only two copies, but again, it's another really good floodgate on its own as well. Now, moving on to the extra deck, the extra deck is basically targets for Dogmatka Punishment and the only Link monster that potentially be decent for basically a format dependent like this when we have a lot of good dark attributes. So let's start with the punishment targets. We have three copies of NTSS. Of course, you have to play most of the targets that you want to play at three because we do play Extravagance. If you play Prosperity instead of Extravagance, then maybe you can have more utility in your extra deck, but I feel like this deck doesn't really need anything like that. You get all the utility you have from the main deck trap cards anyway. So yeah, this card makes Dogmatka Punishment a two for one. So it's a really good. We have two copies, we have three copies of Skull Knight. It's a card that does the same thing as NTSS, but not the turn you send to the grave. You have to banish it and then destroy a, a monster on the field. And the thing is, sometimes you want to activate punishment the moment your opponent commits something to the board. So sending NTSS to the graveyard would not really do anything because they don't have another card. That's the, some of the scenarios you want to send the other targets to be able to get a plus off of them later. Similarly, we have three copies of Skull Wagon. This is a card that you can banish it to destroy a back row. So maybe if you're playing against a mirror match or maybe against another trap deck, you can send this card with punishment to get some more disruption this way by 
banishing this card in your own turn, dealing one of their back row, and then you can, read the re you can let the rest of the deck do your thing. Three copies of Wind Pegasus Static Nister. This is a card that works very similarly to Skull Knight, but as a disruption kind of effect. It's a card that once any of your cards gets destroyed, you can banish from the graveyard to spin one of card your opponent controls back into the deck. So the thing about this card is that you can have two things can happen. A, your opponent is going to forget about it when it's in the graveyard, and they're going to fall right into it when they destroy one of your cards. Or two, your opponent is going to be wary of the card in your graveyard, and they're going to play very awkwardly, trying to play around without destroying your cards, maybe like that, or knowing that the moment they do, they're going to lose a card. So it's a card that by sending to the graveyard with punishment, when you don't want to send NTSS because your opponent doesn't have two cards on the field, can make your opponent's plays more weird, or they can catch them off guard by, dis by disrupting when one, they're destroying their cards. And maybe sometimes if they do it in the main phase one by activating a card that destroys, you can get rid of one of their combo pieces. And the only link monster in the deck is three copies of Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy. Now, we're in the Shizu format still, so we know that we do have a lot of really good dark targets in our opponent's graveyard, and because our entire archetype is dark as well, we can use this card very, very easily. Of course, if you have a card like Necro Valley on the field, you're not going to be able to use this card, but it's here just in case we are getting into a super grindy game. We don't have much to do. We have managed to get two monsters on board. Maybe we can steal a big monster and try to get advantage this way. So yep, that's the deck, guys. Labyrinth is a really, really fun deck, and I hope that once we get a good ban list, then we can basically tone down the tier zero-ness of this format. This deck can become much, much more powerful. It's a deck that you have to be wary of. You're going to see it even now and a lot more in down the road. So yeah, be careful of this deck, and if you want to play it, then definitely go for it with the new support card we got in Foden Hypernova. This deck is definitely a really, really good contender for the format. So yep, that's the deck, guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our upcoming content, and we'll see you next time.